Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I have here another portable refrigerator to review. So this is a dual zone 45 quart portable refrigerator. It will run off 12 volt DC off of your vehicle like my Jeep Gladiator. You can run it off 110. You can run it off the portable power stations, which is what I do when we're out camping. So these things are super to carry along with you on your adventures and when you're jeeping and when you're camping, you take it to your RV. We're gonna open this thing up and see what it's all about. So first off, this is a incredibly well-made, good looking unit. Uh, these, are, these handles are actually spring-loaded. And the cool part about the spring-loaded handles are when you're driving around the vehicle, they're not rattling and banging around. They hold down tight and solid. Latching handle right here. So you just pull that, pivots, latches. You raise it up like this, you pull it out angle, and you can set the thing on the other side depending on where you're locating it in your rig and how you want to uh, carry it. You just set these right in the notch. And the cool part about this hinge is it's actually metal instead of cheap plastic. So very well made. Looks like the hinges are aluminum. We wanna turn this back around. Very nice. So one thing to note about these type refrigerators, these do have an actual compressor inside here. Just like you would find in a large house refrigerator, this is where it's located and there's vents on front and back so it can get plenty of air and keep cool. Okay, on the inside, we have this removable partition. And what this does is partition it to where you have a freezer zone or in a refrigerator zone. If you take this thing out completely, you can have it all set to complete freezer or you can have it set to complete refrigerator. It automatically knows when you remove this partition that you are on single mode and automatically will have one setting over here for you to adjust the temperature. And then inside here we have a removable basket. So you can set this basket on either the freezer side or you can set it on the refrigerator side depending on how you use it. So what we have here is our owner's manual. It tells you everything about it, how to set it up and to use it. And then right here we have the charging cables, DC 12 volt uh, accessory outlet plug that plugs right into the side of the unit. So here we have the 110 unit and what it does, we'll plug this into the wall socket. This will plug into our transformer right here. And then our, our automobile plug, we'll plug into this and that way we can charge it from AC from your house current. Also another cool feature that I noticed, it does have a removable drain plug, so you can take this plug out and drain it if you do get water in it. One cool thing about these units is they are an actual refrigerator, no need for ice. You don't have to put ice in here to keep things cool. So in a normal cooler, when you carry with you, most of your coolers filled up with bags of ice and you have to replenish the ice every day. And one of these, as long as you got it plugged into power, you're just keeping cool, no ice to take up your room and no mess. Uh, you know how normally when you carry a cooler, you have food in here, the ice melts, your, your food gets in the ice and ruins it. Well, in this thing, it just keeps it cool and dry. Very, very nice to use. We've used these several times now camping and we absolutely love these. We never use a cooler with ice again. All right, and down here on the end, we actually have our 12 to 24 volt DC input. And then we have a 15 amp fuse right here, which is just a flat automotive fuse. So I've got this plugged into 110 over here now uh, with the 12 to 24 volt DC converter. We plug this in. All right, so right here on the end, this is our dual zones. You can see it shows different shapes depending on which zone you're using. Uh, we also have an eco and a max mode. And the max mode is what you'll use if you want to cool it down quickly. Once you get it cooled down to the temperature you want, everything's in it. Then you can put it on eco mode to save energy. Uh, this is our settings to change all of it. This is our power button right here. We just press it once and it tells you the temperature in here. The ambient temperature in here is 80 degrees which is what it is inside right there in both zones. We can change these down to whatever we want. You can see the dual zone here. This is the freezer side because you can see the stair step, which has got the stair step because of the compressor here. Uh, it takes up part of the room inside there. This side here without the stair step is actually the refrigerator side. So we can, it's set on zero. We can set this down to, let's set this on 30. We'll set it on 32 and we'll set this one down to now let's see how far it goes down so it goes down to zero we'll set this one to 10 degrees 
And of course it's showing 80 right now, but it won't take it long. It will cool this down inside here. If you listen close, you can actually hear the compressor running. You can hear a little bit of fan running inside there, but it's actually very quiet. So if I open this thing up, like so, and I remove this compartment, you see it automatically, when I re remove this compartment, goes to single zone, which is the full unit. Our temperature is at zero right there. So we can set it, whatever we want this, the full thing to be. If we're using it for drinks or food, we probably want it set. I like it about 32 to 30. It actually don't really freeze stuff too bad at that temperature, but it keeps it nice and really cold. Um, when we put this back in, there's actually a couple notches here, notches inside that it lines up with. Just slide it in. It knows we're back on dual zone again. And then you can set both zones, freezer, refrigerator, or you can reverse them. In the stair step zone, you can set for your freezing or your refrigerator. You can set your refrigerator on this side or freezing on this side. So you do have that option, which is really cool. Let's shut this down so our temperature will start dropping. And we are set on max mode right now. So if we press the setting button, we can go to eco, press the setting, we go back to max. So we'll leave it on max to actually cool it down. And we'll see how long it takes to get down. We'll set this one back on freezer down to 10. And we're going to set this refrigerator part to 32. And we're going to see how long it takes to get down to that temperature. Okay, I had this thing running. I let it run for, it's been actually an hour and 15 minutes. I've been editing some videos, kind of got lost track of time but hour and 15 minutes anyway it's already down pretty much accurate i set it on 32 on the refrigerator side and i set it on 10 degrees on the freezer side and that's exactly what it's setting out so this thing should be nice and cold on the inside and boy is it ever it's really cold so we'll take this thing and test it see how accurate it is well if you look there it's actually 10.5 on the freezer side and it shows 10 degrees here that's pretty good Right there it shows on the fridge side 28 degrees. So that's actually pretty close. It says 32 here, but it's 28. Okay, so now I have it set up here. I'm going to plug it into this Jackery Explorer 500. All right, so we want to plug it in right here. Push the DC button and then we'll turn it on and we'll let this thing wait till the compressor kicks on. See what it says. Open this lid up. It'll definitely kick on faster. All right, guys, just to give you an idea of what this thing will hold, I actually have four gallon jugs. There's two gallons of tea down in there. I have a half gallon of milk. These two jugs here are empty, but they're tea jugs. Then I got two full gallons of tea. So there's four gallon jugs in here, a half gallon of milk. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bottles of water. And I got eight cans of Coke. And there's still actually more room. We could put uh, lunch meat or whatever on top of this, some cheese, some uh, condiments and everything. So that's how much room this thing actually has. It's a lot of room. Pretty incredible, actually. All right, guys. So that is it for the Set Power RV 45D. This thing is pretty incredible. It's actually probably the best build quality of any of them that I've seen and I've tested. Um, I like the nice compact size for still being this small and getting dual zone. You're getting a lot of bang for your buck. A lot of them that are this small are not the dual zone with the dual temps. Uh, they're just a single zone and usually when you go into a dual zone you go into like my other one I have that's an 80 quart so a lot larger this one's real nice and compact you can just throw it in the back seat of your Jeep and that's what we do when we go we we take this thing we plug it into our lighter plug we set it in the back seat of the Jeep we can fill it full of our drinks and uh, stuff that we're going to eat during the day and saves us a lot of money we don't have to buy ice we don't have the mess uh, it's just a great thing to go. And we took these things to Colorado when we went. And uh, the next trip that we're going to go on, we'll, of course, be taking this one here and trying it out for sure. The next camp trip, uh, we're going down to Oklahoma in October probably for a camp trip. So we're going to take this one with us and try it out. So some of the specifications on this thing, the external dimensions outside is 25.4 by 16.7 by 17.3 inch. And then the capacity is 45 quarts inside or 43 liters. It weighs 39 pounds. And the rated power consumption is 60 watts, which you can see here on this Jackery. 
So actually what this thing is drawing right now, because I did go ahead and put all the drinks and stuff in there and it's got to cool them down, it's drawing 59 watts right now. So that's pretty close to what it says. The power consumption is 60 watts and it's running both zones wide open right now on max. I'm not on eco mode. I'm trying to cool this stuff down. So it will, it's going to get the most you're going to take. So out of this thing here, you could expect 10 hours or so, close to 10 hours if it was running consistent. But these things don't run all the time. Once it gets this cooled down, it's going to shut off and then it only kicks on periodically. So actually, if you're running it like that and it's not running non-stop it'll run a lot more hours than your 10 hours it's gonna run several hours uh it should do you quite a while i'm not sure exactly without a big test and that will come in the future so thank you guys for watching check this out in the link below click the thumbs up in this video subscribe to my channel and i'll catch you all in the next one right on